of the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Sorry, I'm trying to multitask. Larry. Larry Whitaker. Here. Sean Smalley. Here. Joe Grossman. Here. Debbie Hamilton. Here. Michelle Sumner. Here. Lisa Woods. Here. Gary Daigle. Here. Okay. Introduction of media. Do we have any media here this evening? None. Anyone that wishes to speak before the agency tonight on this subject, urban renewal, uh, will need to fill out a speaker form and turn it in to the recorder. Forms are available on the sign-in table in the back of the room. Please turn your cell phones off or mute. Announcement for Zoom attendees, if you're joining tonight's meeting, Via Zoom, you will automatically be muted, muted upon entry, and you'll need to identify yourself if your full name is not already attached to the device. You will be unable to unmute yourself if you wish to speak. Use the raise your hand feature to, to use it. Click on the reactions icon at the bottom of your screen and click on the image of a hand. Public comment, the, the purpose of this public comment period is to allow citizens to present information or raise issues. A time limit of three minutes per citizen shall apply. And we have a new timer up there. Um, all, all citizens uh, must come up to the microphone. So our... We don't have any. Okay. Our consent agenda is the meeting minutes from August 14th. I need a motion. I make a motion that we approve the minutes of August 14th. Thank you. I need a second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none. Vote, please. Whitaker. Sure. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> I figured that's what you meant. Daniel. Molly? Yes. Grassman? Yes. Hamilton? Here. I mean, yes. <laughs> Aye. Sumner? Aye. Woods? Aye. Daigle? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, the first thing on the agency business is a grant application approval for the North State Street laundromat. Christy? This is the Gilbert Community Development. Um, so the Urban Renewal Task Force um, actually had met on October 18th um, reviewing the application, um, which has turned into two. It was originally one application with two requests um, because we have the ability for facade improvement and the ability um, for business location to incorporate. Um, we broke the application out into two. This is for 246 North State Street. Um, Lady Brown has State Farm um, building, and then this is the building to the north of that that she also owns, and they want to open a um, very a small neighborhood type laundromat that um, would probably be utilized more by the immediate area and then uh, have living quarters within that. And so it would kind of be that mixed piece. And so we would recommend having a $25,000 grant for the facade improvement and twenty five dollars for the location. Okay. Thank you. We have questions. Um, so we need a motion. I need a motion. So the other paper in the green folder, because I have two of them. Is that the one that I should be looking at? You have two of these. Does that have the all the just just follow from number five? Uh, 
Oh, I don't have to do those steps. Right. So I need a motion, please. I make a motion to approve the two grant applications, facade improvement in the amount of 25,000 and location of new business in the amount of 25,000 for 246 North State Street for the amount, total amount of 50,000. I'll, I'll second. Discussion. Yes, is the is grant the second part of that after the facade part? Is that going to be apartment building structure, or is that is actually for the building of the business? It's all one building. So they will build or remodel the interior of it uh, to accommodate for the commercial use, and then they'll, um, they'll build the residential component, which is about 800 square feet. They will build into or 500 square feet, sorry. They'll build that into the residential. So they'll have to meet building codes for both. So, what part of that is how much they hold that is for the actual commercial piece of that So, the picture? grants for the business portion. So, the facade, and the, there's one grant for the facade and one grant for the business. Okay. So, that's eight. Eight. Yes, 800 square feet and 520. So the grant being is the grant being used for the building portion of business portion or the residential portion of so the commercial the commercial building. Anybody else? Okay. So Whitaker? Yes. Molly? Yes. Crossman? Aye. Hamilton? Aye. Sumner? Aye. Woods? Aye. Daigle? Yeah. Motion carries. Reports and or discussion. PIFN reports city manager. Yeah, I'll be really brief. So I were required to do uh, an annual report on our uh, activities in urban renewal. Uh, so that's what this is. Uh, it just talks about how how we achieve what we achieve and where we're going in the future. Uh, and there's a second document in there that I just wanted to enclose uh, for your review for economic development for the Stearns Lane. The new property owners have hired a marketing firm and put together a real nice uh, recruitment piece. And I just thought you should have that for your information. That new one down here is, is yeah, great. Nice, yeah. yeah, it's very nice. I can thank John Day for that. He's right there. Okay. Anything else? Any more questions? Is hey. that open yet? Is, is that, it open yet? Open, John? Don't say it. They have seen about once they're settled, probably. Okay, with no further business, can you adjourn? It's about five minutes until the council meeting starts. I can't hear you very well. I don't think so. I will. I will talk really loud. Okay. I have a loud voice. Yes. <laughs> That'd be just a thought. <laughs> That'd be just a thought. <laughs> so um, I can pull it up on my phone too. Yeah, so I don't know if you can write that even. Did she? Uh, I, I did all the writing, but I only did Please stand for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation and God, and it is all with liberty and justice for all.
<laughs> Councillor Daigle. That's good. Councillor Whitaker. Here. Councillor Smalley. Here. Councillor Grossman. Here. Councillor Hamilton. Here. Councillor Woods. Here. Mayor Sumner. Here. Listen. Introduction of media. Any media in the audience? Lots of friendly faces out there. It's nice to see such a full house. So anyone wishing to speak before city council tonight on any subject matter will need to fill out a speaker form and turn it into the recorder. Forms are available on the sign-in table in the back of the room. Please turn cell phones off or silence them during the meeting. And I think I'm at full capacity tonight. Announcement for Zoom attendees. If you're joining tonight's meeting via Zoom, you will automatically be muted upon entry and you'll need to identify yourself if your full name is not already attached to the device being used. You will be unable to unmute yourself. If you wish to speak, use the raise your hand feature. To use it, click on the reactions icon at the bottom of your screen and click on the image of a hand. Reminder for counsel, speak into the microphone when talking so everyone can hear you. And speak and please speak loudly so the whole room can hear you. I also want to make an announcement that this evening we will be having a, an executive session at the end of our council meeting, and then we'll we will be reconvening our council meeting after the executive session for anyone who would like to remain after. Public comment. The purpose of this public comment period is to allow citizens to present information or raise issues regarding agenda items only. There will be a time at the end of the meeting for citizens to speak about mm -hmm. off agenda items. A time limit of three minutes per citizen shall apply. All citizens must come up to the microphone. And we definitely will be uh, holding you to three minutes with as many comments as we have tonight. So the first one is uh, Danny. And please uh, give us your whole name and your address when you come up to speak. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Danielle Bellaton, and I live in Hastings Village. Um, and there are a few of us here that are here tonight. Would you guys please stand up? These are my people from Hastings Village. And I just want everybody to know we're, we are people just like you guys. And just because we're living outside and living in tents or in a shack doesn't mean that we are bad people. There are people out there that are, but there are a lot of good people here at Hastings Village. And I just want everybody to know that we are, we, we're just like you and we deserve the same treatment as everybody else. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Karen Meyer. Karen Meyer, 1826 F&I. Um, I have three things to talk about. Hopefully I'll get to them all. First of all, this uh, three months ago, I signed a uh, complaint to the city about the mess out of Hastings Village. And a few days after that, Wayne Ellsworth from Uncle Hart sent out. Um, I noticed to everyone that if they didn't have it cleaned up within 30 days, anything left outside was going to be discarded. So I'm going, yay, it's going to get cleaned up. Well, after 30 days, nothing happened. Uh, basically, the Hastings resident just gave us a, a thumbs, you know, thumb their nose at us. And uh, no one, Wayne, as far as I know, or the city did not say anything further about it. So we still have the same problem. And it's an unsolved problem. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, I don't want to become a hub for the homeless. Uh, we're the only people, as far as I know, in Douglas County, where they can come in and set up their tents and stay for as long as they want. And you're going to, I don't, you can explain that later. I don't, um, 
I, I don't want to be the hub for the homeless. I don't want all of the homeless of Douglas County ending up here. And I know that you said that you're following the model of in um, the Cottage Grove had. Well, Cottage Grove is a small town like we are. And they were bringing in so many homeless that the people got fed up. And it ended up that the three three members of the council, the last time I looked, checked, were under the process of being recalled. So that I think you should let the citizens decide. It's the citizen's choice. Um, I read with some dismay that it's a, that the mayor said to the news review, it's a win-win for everybody. We had neighbors from neighboring neighbors, neighboring neighborhoods come up and have coffee with the mayor for and talk for an hour and a half about the impact on the neighborhood about the stealing, about the people creating a, um, chaos and loud noises that night. And that's not a win-win. Plus, these people have lost their property values. They've had tens of thousands of dollars of lost in property values. Okay. Um, so I know that there's good people out here from Hastings. I used to donate to Hastings. But you got to do something about the ones you want. Thank you. Mary Ann Anderson. My I am for I have supported Hastings Village for uh, over. Can you say your name and your address? Okay, I'm saying Mary Ann Anderson, 2663 Gray Fox Drive. Okay. Anyway, I've supported Hastings Village over a year and a half. My church started uh, taking food down there. I run the Hastings Village uh, Facebook right now. And what that does, when I go down there to, to find out what contributions they need, I post it and then I pick it up. We have a storage at my church, so not a lot of the stuff goes down there. What I'm seeing, they're cleaning up that place. I've been I'm down there Thursday. They're cleaning it up or getting the stuff out, the stuff that people don't pick up, it goes in the dumpsters. So these people are trying. And a lot of people now, we don't take as much food down there because they're becoming self-supporting. So give them a chance. Where are they going to go? What is there? We have, they have one lady down there, and she's probably in her 70s. The police took her in. She was sleeping on the street in, in Sutherland in the rain with nothing. These people took her in. She's still down there. So give these people, I know I keep saying give them a chance, but there are people working there, so they are getting on. Danny's doing an excellent job of taking care of the uh, contribution. So, and Wayne is doing a good job cleaning it up. So Josh that passed away, he was helping clean up that stuff. And, and he passed away because he was cold. He took some coals, went into a little house, and he suffocated. That's how he died. So. Anyway, I support. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Klein. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Kevin Klein. I've lived in Southern I've been here four years. And um, uh, 201 Nicholas Court. Yeah, down the street. Uh, well, I'm deeply concerned about our community as a whole and how we as a community uh, come around each other, we support one another. And the Hastings Village, I'm not too familiar with, but I do drive-bys every once in a while. And to your point, for those of you that live there, you are doing a good job of taking care of the place. There has been some transformational things I've seen. My bigger concern, I think, and maybe uh, questions that are not answered is, who's taking care of the utilities or who's providing the utilities and anything of that sort uh, at Hastings Village and who is paying for that? That's my only question for tonight. I do have some concerns, uh, like other citizens, about just keeping the safety. Um, but when I do drive by there, I've seen some, some increase of, of uh, activity, good activity, it seems like. And it's off the beaten path, which is good. But I do have a greater concern as a citizen as to where my tax money is going. 
uh, if it is indeed uh, supporting this. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Meyer. <laughs> My name is Mike Meyer. I live at 1826 Athens Run in Sutherland. I have a as a as a retired contractor, I have a few questions on these uh, sheds, these containers that you have put out there. Uh, first off, have they been inspected? Actually, I don't want my answer taken. I don't want anybody answering me. I don't want to take away my time. Uh, have they been inspected and permitted for UBC and UMC and uh, electrical and plumbing? Have they, have, have they been inspected and passed for uh, occupation? And then uh, as per the person that was asphyxiated out there, um, these these buildings have fire and smoke uh, alarms. Are there uh, are the windows and that are are they big enough for somebody to escape if they had to? Um, is there proper ventilation in them? Yeah. And um, are these are these sheds and containers insured? Or is actually is the whole Hastings and Village insured for damages and anything? Well, just like homeowners insurance, are they insured? And who, if so, who's paying for that? And how much is it? And then uh, I've seen a truckload, maybe two, of gravel going in there, and somebody else has seen some gravel going in there. Have these uh, have these is that gravel going in there? Uh, is that per wetlands for the state? There, I know that's a wetland down there. Has it been mitigated? Or what are you doing with the gravel in there? Because uh, I don't think you can take gravel in on a wetland. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Valerie Shepard. My name is Valerie Shepard and I live at 7870 Hastings Avenue in part of the village. Um, a couple of things. I really like his questions. I agree with Rose. I'd like to know that kind of things too. Um, I just want to point out that I've been in Sutherland since 2007. I bought my house with my husband on uh, Eddy Street, and it's right in the Hawthorne area. So I was um, really surprised to see some of my neighbors opposing. Where I live now, considering that I was one of you guys just a couple years ago. I didn't ask you to force me to being homeless. I've been homeless for almost two years, December 9th, for two years. Uh, I am thankful for Hastings Village because as a single female, I was living in my Jeep and then uh, my Jeep was stolen and I had nowhere else to stay. I was living, uh, sleeping under the awning at the grocery store because it was lit up and I was safe there. So the fact that we have Fence, we have barbed wire and chain link. I mean, it might sound a little intimidating, but it's safe for somebody like me. It's safe for somebody who's single, and it's safe for my pet, who is my companion and stays with me. Uh, there's pros and cons of the camp. I understand this. Pros, I'm safe. I get. Um, I have made some good friends there. I have made some connections in the community. That I think are detrimental to the homeless people, and I think we are making we're breaking ground with this. However, there are some cons as well, and that is. Um, you know, people they drive by where our tents are on fire and they yell, tweakers, burn tweakers. <laughs> people should teach the children manners. Um, I think that if you guys are going to approach this uh, any further from here, that just I just ask that you guys have some respect and some kindness because I don't want to be homeless either. That is the last thing I wanted to be. I did not want to be homeless at 42 years old where I can see my house from the camp. And I see it every day with my daughter there and my husband and my kids, my other sons. So, just have some respect and kindness when you're approaching this subject tonight because none of us want to be there. All of us would like to have a home. Uh, well, okay, I take that back. There's probably some that don't want a home and that's okay too. That's their choice. So just find some compassion. It's coming up on the winter months and we're cold. So if you guys want to do anything, it's just a privacy fence. You guys don't have to stare at us because we're not an exhibit. We're not a zoo. Um, or get us some blankets so we can stay warm. Some gloves so our hands stay warm because it hurts to be cold. Um, if you guys have any questions, you guys can find me after the meeting, but thank you guys for your time.
Thank you. Jean Kofal. Good evening. My name is Jean Kofal. I live at 1822 National Island. And uh, I'd like to know if I know those people need help, and we'd like to help them, and we are compassionate. Uh, I don't know uh, our family can make fun by myself. Thanks to a friend of our family. Try to do whatever we can. <clears throat> what I'm interested in is what are the solutions to solve the problems of these people? Are they getting help to find jobs? Are they getting some training to find jobs? How about if they took those little homes and got a blueprint on how they built a little home and build them? We got, I was an electrician for 50 years. So we could get people like me to help them with the electrical folks to build a thing. It's not tough. And I'm sure there's there's all kinds of tradesmen in our in our city who would volunteer to do this. Why can't we do something like that? That helps them out. That gives them a trade. At least one thing, it gives them, uh, I forget what I want to say there, but anyway, it helps them out to get confidence. So if we can do things like that, what, what is the city doing to do things like that? That's where our money should be going, is to helping those people out so they can get out of that life if they want to. And I'm there, you can call me up anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Very broad. I don't know if I can follow that. <laughs> My name is Terry Brock. I live at uh, 403 Fairway Estates. We just moved up there, so brand new to me. Um, so, this is not a little problem that we have, and this is not a problem that's going to go away. This is a nationwide problem. And I'll tell you what, um, I'm just a good old conservative, Douglas County and things being a little bit different. But when we vote for people that mandate things into being laws and bills and so on, kind of stuck with it. We're not happy with it. I'm not happy with it. I uh, had the opportunity to go down to the camp and look around, uh, looked at a couple other camps. And the simple fact is, is there is no easy solution, but there has to be something better than what's going on. I think that there could be some steps to help the people that want to help, want to be helped, people that want to do well, people that want need a hand up. I'm all for that. But if you don't want a hand up, you're not getting a hand from me. And I think that a lot of people probably feel that way. I think we, if we put our heads together and we think about this as a community and come up with a solution and not a solution that's a big open door, because we also understand this too, that if you build it, they will come. And if the word's out that Sutherland's taken them, there's there is no end to that. I think we started with six and it's grown. And I think that, that might be a concern from a lot of people. So with that, some rules to this, some order to it, a plan. What is the plan? I know right now we're kind of on our heels. And you're right, it is it's turning winter time and things are gonna get really ugly. So I think if we put some effort into a solution and we take care of our own, we take care of our community and not be a wide open door to, to the whole county and the whole state, then that could be a little bit more feasible. Thank you. Dan Barca. My name is Dan Barcher, 115 North State Street. Um, just want to speak, kind of echo what Terry said. Uh, I think uh, if we can control and monitor who's actually coming into that space, and then everybody goes there and says they're a Sutherland resident, well, that's not really true. We all did our work, did some research on it. That's not what's happening. It's like it, it's become, it's like, this is kind of a cool space. Um, but I agree, with, I agree with Terry. Let's let's uh, monitor it and, and see and take care of our own. Um, I'm a business owner in downtown. Um, this, the Hastings Village has been huge for helping downtown. Um, and we need to continue with that. We well, have yeah, our support. Um, we seem to move in the right direction uh, and just make it more accessible, but again, to our local. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Gary Fadness. Gary Fadness, 119 West Central. So follow those guys, 300%. Um, if you look around two years ago, I had people sleeping in my awning, people sleeping in the bench outside my business, outside their doors. Very frustrating. Couldn't do anything about it. Pacing Village opened up. They have a place to go. Got them out from under my awning. Got them out from under in front of my store. And honestly, it feel like it cleaned up downtown because they actually have a place to go. That being said, it is a place for Southern residents. Um, you go to Roseburg, there's tents on the street. You go to Portland, there's tents on the street. You go to Reno, there's tents on the street. Sutherland, there's no tents on the street because they have a place to go. Um, same with, uh, you know, Arizona. I was just in Arizona recently. Phoenix has a place for them to go. There's not a lot of homeless people you see in Phoenix. They're, they have a place to go. So with a little monitoring, a little a little vetting, I think Hastings Village could be something that benefits Sutherland. But at the same time, it has to benefit Sutherland. So we should be a shining example for Roseburg. Have them have their own Hastings Village. Let them house the people from Roseburg. And we'll focus on people from Sutherland. If they have jobs, if they work in Sutherland, welcome. But if they're just here to have a free place to live, then they don't belong here. They can go wherever they need to go. But I do think that it's helped downtown and we should improve it and make it better. And also they have to be accountable too. If they, they should be accountable for themselves, making sure it's cleaned, making sure they do respect the rules and the laws, and then they'll be accepted. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. That's all the ones I have. Check. Nope. Honda presentation, uh, homeless response team, and Umpa Heart Pro Progress update. Start with Pat. Thank you, Mary, Mayor Sumner, President Hamilton, counselors, staff, and citizens, and all our audience members. I'm Pat Lynch. I'm speaking as the uh, on behalf of the village in our on our uh, efforts here as the director of livability services. Uh, Captain Kurt Sorensen and Wayne Ellison, the president of Ump the Heart, have been asked to make some comments following mine. I will try to be brief, relatively speaking, and perhaps later we can schedule a full-blown town hall so this can be more adequately explored. But for tonight, I'd like to outline and review the landscape of where we are with housing and homelessness in Sutherland, as I see. As many know, and many may not, through the federal court system and Oregon legislation, our city's been handed an unfunded mandate. Pat? Yeah. Do you think you can either sit up there or talk a little bit more? If they can't hear you. Okay. Yes, we'll get up here. Thank you. I wondered about that. I probably have the microphone. It sounds like a drum over there. Anyway, as, as I think most of us know, some don't. Um, we're working under an unfunded mandate. We've been required by the courts to behave in certain ways and provided no funding. We're given, uh, really when it's all boiled down, three choices as to how we manage our homeless population here. One is to do nothing. And that's to allow camping, sleeping, congregating with no controls. We saw some of that a couple of years ago. Uh, option two is hurting the homeless creating regulations about where, where not, and when camping can occur, and then tasking someone with issuing citations, following regulations and creating them, herd control and management, if you will, or the third option is what we're doing, and that's designating a place where camping is allowed with few or no barriers to its use. This third option has been our choice for the last two years. Every city with a homeless population that I'm aware of started with option one. I don't know of any city or town where doing nothing has worked. In my opinion, hurting the homeless, option two, as practiced very commonly on the West Coast, has not solved any of the root problems or reduced homeless populations that may have in fact have increased them. Moving our homeless populations around has shifted enormous resources, better used and more needed elsewhere. <laughs> and has, particularly in population centers, grown the problem and 
numbers of homeless folks who were left to roam during the day. We are trying in our small city to create an environment that allows a path out for those who are able to accept managed help and can, to some degree, help themselves. Broadly speaking, Hastings Village residents are locals. A small fraction are not. The low barrier camp designation points to the necessity of throwing as few barriers as reasonable in the way of using the camp. This will this may always mean that there will be a few out of area campers and transient, but then our hope is that most all will be transient and move on to better life situations. A reasonable, serious voice tonight often expressed concern for our camp has been, if you build it, they will come. It's a concern and a valid fear. In our experience here and in consultation with a number of other cities, of similar size and situations as ours, this has not proven to be the case. Our numbers have fluctuated, but they have not shown continuous growth and have settled at about 35. The few of you who have actually walked the village and those who have driven slowly by on a winter's day will, I believe, that Hast will agree, I believe, that Hastings Village is no field of dream. Our recent cleanup and trash removal has made a significant improvement Maybe someday it can be a field of hope. A few other critics have objected to what they see from their viewpoint as the city pandering to the comfort of the village residents and their drug need. Pandering is an interesting word. My dictionary says that pandering is the act of catering to or profiting from the weaknesses, vices, or unreasonable desires of others. Hastings Village is populated by a complex, diverse, less fortunate group of folks who are pretty broken, lost, addicted, damaged, and some of them ill. I suppose with a jaundice eye, you could accuse us of pandering, catering to the very basic needs of human beings in trouble and in danger. But catering to, profiting from weaknesses, vices, or the unreasonable desires of others, that's a conclusion I don't think any reasonable person could reach. Somewhat associated with the whole pandering issue, in that pandering is associated with profiting from another's weakness, is the belief that somehow some of those who are actively involved in this are just maneuvering to land, land some cushy job. Cushy's an interesting word too. Let me just say this, there is nothing cushy about homelessness. The massive homeless industry our nation has created is only peripherally involved in what we're doing here. Hastings Village is a completely homegrown solution at this point, made possible only through the efforts of this city, incredible volunteers like Wayne Ellsworth and his board, many local churches, nonprofits, and their volunteers. So then to the money, what's all this we hear about grants? Are we seeking grant funding for our homeless and houseless folks? Absolutely yes. Has the city received any funding from any source? Not a dime. We continue to work with Senators Merkley and Wyden in hopes that approved congressionally directed funding will pass Congress, be signed, and eventually come to the city. Maybe next year, they say. We are working with Uncle Hart's board of directors in search of funding to staff our village to make it safer and more secure. We have established new relationships from our city with our state senators and representatives and have asked repeatedly, as recently as today, for inclusion in legislation to provide funding here. We have joined initiatives sponsored by the League of Oregon Cities, the Mayor's Association, the City Manager's Association, and others to direct funding to local grassroots operations and away from inefficient agencies. We need to quit rewarding failure. Your city's meeting with state and federal housing agencies to identify opportunities to partner with and bring workforce housing to a city with too many no vacancy signs. Human nature is fascinating. When a troubling, complicated, unwanted issue like this arises, we all want our say. We all want to know everything. We all want a quick, easy, elegant solution 
to problems that look unsolvable. If such a solution is found, we are dazzled, we are amazed and relieved. When no such solution appears, we complain. It's natural. But sometimes complaints can lead to solutions. We need to keep our ears open. I, I guess I just want our citizens, all of you, to know the city staff, your council, Wayne and his volunteers, the Hastings residents, are all trying to put together and keep together the best solution for our current situation that's possible. And this with no financial help from our state or federal agencies. I believe we have been and will be flexible and open to change and better solutions. But it's also true that it's better to be a part of the solution than a part of the problem. I invite you, if you have a better solution that's moral and legal, don't be bashful. I will also observe in closing that this, this issue tonight is the basement level of a skyscraper-sized problem. We have a homeless problem we're attempting to address. We have more homeless students than we have homeless adults. We have families that are teetering on the brink of becoming homeless. We have folks who have nothing but a home on wheels. We have families living in tiny quarters that they can barely afford. We have too many employers who can't hire new and replacement employees because there's nothing to buy or rent that they can afford. We're, we are building housing and apartments all at market level rates and costs or higher. We are in the middle of an enormous state and nationwide shortage of housing. We desperately need to be part of the solution. It's easy to be part of the problem. It takes work and dedication to be part of the solution, and I believe we're up to it. Captain Sorensen, if you have a moment, we would like to uh, hear a little bit about our police force's view on what we're doing here and what effect it's had. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Well said. Mayor, members of the council, thank you for having us here tonight. I am Kurt Sorensen. Very. <laughs> uh, Kurt Sorensen from the police department. Nice. Later. <laughs> um, so I am on the council, uh, the homeless council. We meet probably every other Friday. Uh, Wayne, Pat, Melanie, Jerry, myself, um, Aaron. Um, and I told this story before, and, and Jerry loves it when I tell it because um, it's a story of him being right, me being wrong. So years ago, when you know the homeless crisis really, you know, was was reaching a, a, a head, um, we used to about every morning about sunrise, we would get a call of someone sleeping on someone's porch or in the parking lot of a store or you know on somebody's back porch, in somebody's backyard, something like that. And um, Jerry really wanted to set up a camp because the, you know, the, the, the Ninth Circuit made the ruling and, you know, we, we had to do something. Jerry wanted to set up a camp and I, I thought to myself, that's crazy, just let us do our jobs. Let the police officers handle it. Um, and it was, it was literally every single day. Every single day, just about 7 o'clock, 7.30, we would get that call. And uh, when we set up the camp and homeless people started utilizing the camp instead of people's, you know, storefronts, uh, backyards, um, that problem went away. Um, we don't have those calls anymore. We rarely have calls about uh, homeless people in the community. Very rarely. Um, we do, you know, so let's talk about problems at the camp. We do have problems at the camp. There are some. And we handle them. And Wayne and myself and 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 a select few on our on our police department, Wayne has our cell phone numbers and he calls us all the time. Not all the time, probably 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 <laughs> once every two weeks. Not all the time. To me it feels like it's all the time because it's Wayne. <laughs> probably once every two weeks. And and uh, but they're minor problems for the most part that we we navigate through, that we 
you know, we, you don't want us managing the camp. And I've said this all along. You don't want the police force managing the camp. That is not our job. Um, that's like the military, you know, moving into a town and, and trying to manage a town. You can't do that. You don't want that. You have to have somebody like Wayne and Uncle Hart doing that job. And the way we handle it is that it's, it's like an apartment complex. You know, you have a manager of an apartment complex. You have residents of that of apartment complex. And if you have a problem there, you call us and we'll come and we'll try to work through the problem. Um, there have been problems around the camp. There have been some laws that were broken, you know, by associations of the camp in the area. And we've handled it. Um, you know, there are going to continue to be problems. There are. Uh, the, the, the people who are living there, you know, um, they have their issues. That's why they're there. Um, and I feel bad for them. I do. But, you know, everybody in here has their problems. Everybody in here has an issue that they've dealt with in their past. Um, most of us just have really good resources. Most of us have help. Um, you know, a lot of people living down at the camp, um, some of them, you know, some of them really need someone to manage their daily lives. Uh, so yes, there's going to continue to be problems. Um, we have open communication. Um, and as far as the, you know, as far as the calls that we've had in the past, uh, those those early morning calls, we just don't get those anymore. So uh, Jerry was right. I was wrong. I said it again. Thank Jerry for making me say it for me. <laughs> Thank you. Wayne Ellsworth. Wayne Ellsworth, 355 South Calcutta, as mayor, city council, city manager, people watching from home, and all these beautiful people here. I am just so overwhelmed and so grateful for the passion that Sutherland can see. This doesn't happen anywhere else in Douglas County. People coming together to talk about these kind of issues. It is very, very uplifting, and I am very proud to be part of this community that you guys put this together. I, it's unbelievable. I was asked today to to come out and give a give an update on Hastings Village, mainly just to tell you guys where we're at and potentially where we're going. Okay, and I do want to say that I have been wrong more times than right many times in my life. And I've had a lot of great spirited conversations on, on Facebook and other media about how wrong I can be. And I'm, I totally understand that. There has been promises that were made because I thought I could do things. When you're working with volunteers, like a majority of people are, you guys volunteer all over. That's one thing I've noticed about Sutherland with the amount of churches and city projects and stuff. Everybody loves to volunteer around here. You can understand that volunteers sometimes bringing together can be hard to accomplish certain tasks. For a person that, and I'm totally making excuses right now for myself, working full time, having a business on the side, you know, plus helping run a nonprofit, being the president of this, you know, being a volunteer, I do donate all my extra time to this effort, all my extra time. That means sometimes missing kids' basketball games. That means sometimes not going to a theater presentation. Those kind of things because I believe in it. And luckily, I have a wife that understands it. Because we have been volunteers in this city for the last five years until we retired from the local fire department. We understand seven years? No. That's why my wife is here to remind me. So... But yeah, to answer some of the questions, but give you an update on how things are, we have actually been, like everybody said, we have been hovering around that 35 mark. What you guys don't know is there's another 50 people on the streets that you don't see. They mentioned before, too, about um, Sutherland with a homeless crisis, about our more children being homeless than adults. As of uh, 2020, let's see, it was 2023, January, we found out that there was over 75 homeless children in the Sutherland School District. 
they must have homeless parents too. Plus with the RV um, mandate that we have going through town, you know, we found out that there was over 120 families living in RVs on people's property. At any point, those people can become homeless. At any point. But we've been staying around the 35 mark. And yes, when, when Pat was talking, there has been people from other towns that do come through. But it's not because we built this beautiful thing out of Hastings. I mean, everybody will tell me right off the bat that it's not a beautiful site. I've been told many times. <laughs> But we did haul four yarder dumpsters out of there full of trash. And that wasn't all me. It was all those people that are here tonight from Hastings Village and more. On average, I would have about 15 people helping me out of the village clean up their own stuff, mainly because they had the ability to do it. They don't have a dumpster that can hold enough trash for 35 people. We don't have the ability to get a bigger one. So in, a, in an essence, that's why we have some trash out there. Plus, we have a lot of beautiful volunteers in this town that want to bring everything in their garage out there. <laughs> I mean, I haven't done it yet. I was thinking about it. But like I said in the beginning, like we would, we kind of, people who are housed have different means to be able to hide their belongings. People out there do not. So that's how you get to see some of those things. But when it gets to a point I need to be reminded that we need to clean it up. And I was very fortunate that a lot of people helped me remind me that I needed to clean it up. So we took our time and we made a promise that we would have a stipulation in place that we would have it cleaned up by September 13th. That didn't happen. Came out another month. I made sure to rent dump trailers. I brought trucks out there. I brought people out there. We had tons of volunteers. We did the best we could, and if you can see it where it was before and what it is now for the people that haven't driven by, it looks a hell of a lot better than it did before, and it's going to continue to get better because we've got really great volunteers that are continuing to clean. We have another dumpster going out there. We're going to clean that up, and some people um, noticed that there was dirt coming out there. There was some rock that was laid out there. The rock that was laid out there was to extend the walk, uh, the, the right-of-way there, and it does fall within the uh, wetland ordinances of what we can develop on. And what we want to do is we want to be able to get the people out of the water. Because last year, um, we had a really hard time with the amount of water that we got, that we lost a lot of the material that people were donated when it comes to tents. So we, were, we had to build um, pedestals or platforms to get people out of the water. But then we couldn't really anticipate, you know, when there's a lot of water coming in the amount of rats that come out of the ground. I mean, thousands. And um, they scare me to death. Yes, they are huge. And we tried our best to mitigate that. So if someone says that, you know, we're developing a place where, you know, people are, you know, want to be there as this beautiful thing, it's really not there. You know, we want to be able to build micro shelters like the two little cottages that are out there and put them on that raft rock path so we can get people out of the tents. And that leads us, you know, the part of conversation where a lot of people you might not know, but this is phase two of the Sutherland and Uncle Hart project. Phase two is to be able to get people in a spot where they feel comfortable to the point where they want to accept change. One of the hardest things to do when a person is is homeless is to trust other agencies, other people, because they have been broken, like Pat was saying. Some people are broken. Some people do have extraordinary mental health issues. They do, and they can't take care of themselves. But what we wanted to build is a completely boots to the ground, organic process where we can develop a place with very little money, because we are not getting any from state or federal agencies. We wanted to be able to do it on the backs of volunteers because we knew that Sutherland could handle it with their volunteers. Once a person gets into one of these micro shelters, whether it be the container, whether it be the, the little shed, micro shack, whatever you want to call it, they are entered into a program of care. Right now we have 13 people living in the nine pods that are out there. And within two weeks that they have been in there, We've already housed our first person. I didn't do it. 
but we permanently house somebody that could not take care of themselves. That person was dropped off by BPA a year ago with nothing on our doorstep. And these people took that person in, escaping domestic violence, gave that person a tent, tried doing their best for a year until appropriate services came along and now she's housed. These are the things that we get to do by putting people in a place and giving them appropriate services. We have great uh, partnerships with ADAPT, Uncle Health Alliance, and HIV Alliance that come by multiple times a week to be able to offer their resources, whether it be substance use, whether it be therapy, whether it be peer support, case management, harm reduction, whatever it might be, just so we can plant seeds that people may want to be able to take that step and get out of houselessness. And we've been seeing really, really good results. It may not look at, like it from the road. You know, some people like to squeal their tires going by and yelling at people and stuff, but it may not look like it from the road, but what's happening inside is the beautiful. And we've only been able to do that because of the will that this city has when it comes to, we're not going to stand for this stuff. We're gonna take care of our people and none of the other cities are doing it. So Terry came by a couple of weeks ago. I showed uh, Terry Brock the village and stuff and we were talking. He asked a lot of really great questions. And we talked about what is it gonna to take to get people work ready? Well, we're almost there. We have a shower trailer now. It's my original shower trailer that the United Way bought me. So now people can shower every day as long as I buy them propane. I forget sometimes. <laughs> But now they can shower. They have a place that's stable that they can that they can stay and be, you know, at least a little bit more secure. They can get transportation through ADAPT to be able to go through peer support. And now we're working on a bus stop so we can actually further that more so people can go out and work. We've had a lot of people that have worked full time and just lived in tents. That's got to be hard. <clears throat> I, I, don't, I don't even know what that looks like. But people are doing it. So... I guess, in conclusion, what we're looking at in the future is to be able to develop this idea that a small town like Sutherland, who has under 10,000 people, which a lot of the reason why we can't get a lot of the funding is because we're small, can take a good chunk of people, good volunteers, barely any money whatsoever, and make it work. Because realistically, when you look at the numbers, you want to just look at the numbers. So far, Umpqua Heart has received $75,000 from Umpqua Health Alliance to be able to build this second phase, which are those pods, those storage container housing units. We get $25,000 left. The city has invested some time, energy, and some good money to be able to be helpful to develop this initiative but it isn't the millions and millions of dollars that have gone into the town next door or the millions to $187,000 per day in Portland that's going out for houseless. We are doing it on literally nothing. We have no full-time employees. We have no grants to hire full-time employees. We are in a spot where we've been able to do this because those people that live in Hastings they want to get out, they want to work, and they want to work together. We have right here, you know, the chair of the council. We have security here tonight, and we have a couple of really great advocates. Those people have been holding that place together for two years. You can say that I've done this. I have not. I've been there to support, do the best that I can with the time that I have, which is few and far between. But those people that are living out there, they're the real people that are building this initiative and they're the ones that created this community and I can only see it getting better. So with your support, the ideas of maybe starting a council to be able to take all these beautiful ideas that you guys had tonight to create something bigger, I am totally for it. So it'd be really nice if we can have those conversations down the road, but that's really what I got for any kind of update. Good? Thank you. I know. Yeah. Okay, on to consent agenda. October 9th, 2023. Never motion. 
make a motion to approve the consent agenda for October 9th. Great. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Go ahead and vote. Councillor Daigle? Aye. Councillor Whitaker? Aye. Councillor Smalley? Aye. Councillor Grossman? Aye. Councillor Hamilton? Aye. Councillor Woods? Aye. Mayor Sumner? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, council business for seismic contract award. Mayor, Council, Mr. Gilbert, Community Development. So as you're probably all aware, um, the city was awarded a, I'm going to use round numbers, 2.5 million um, for the fire station number one and the police station um, for seismic improvements. And so we sent out an RFP um, requesting proposals. We, re we received two. Um, by those that showed up for the site visit. It was a mandatory site visit that we held. Um, with the team that we had put together to review the proposals, we um, derived at selecting DCS uh, engineering and architecture. And so with that, um, there are amounts that were indicated in the grant applications as it breaks it out. Um, would be for $354,700 and $357,300 for the engineering, architecture, and construction management services for the seismic portion of the grant. The construction um, will come at a later date, but then they won't exceed those people. We would ask that um, you award that grant to DCS. <clears throat> I have a motion to approve, approve contract to ZCS Engineering and Architecture in the amount of and not to exceed three hundred fifty-four thousand seven hundred, and the in the in the amount of and not to exceed three hundred fifty-seven thousand three hundred for engineering, architectural, and construction management services for the fire and police departments, seismic rehabilitation as presented. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Any discussion? Vote. Councillor Daigle? Aye. Councillor Whitaker? Aye. Councillor Smalley? Aye. Councillor Grossman? Aye. Councillor Hamilton? Aye. Councillor Woods? Aye. Mayor Sumner? Aye. Motion carries. On to the liquor application approval. Captain <clears throat> Council. Chris Sorensen from the police department. Uh, this is a OLPT change of ownership for off premises and limited places, limited present, limited on premises license for the sale of alcoholic beverages at Center Markets number 45. Um, this is the old Smitty, so it's a change of ownership from Smitty basically to Center Market 45. Um, the police department has found no information that would be viewed as disqualifying by the OLCC. And your options are number one, to provide uh, OLCC recommendation that this license is uh, to be approved and granted, or number two, uh, provide OLCC a recommendation that this license is not to be approved and granted. Well, I got it. So I have a motion. Make a motion to approve. Any discussion? Is this, uh, is this sale all already done? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, oh, I moved over the sale of building. Selling. This owner is already done. Councillor Daigle? Okay, yeah. Councillor Whitaker? Aye. Councillor Smalley? Aye. Councillor Grossman? Aye. Councillor Hamilton? Aye. Councillor Woods? No. Mayor Sumner? Aye. Motion carries. On the reports, LOC conference report. Councillor Wood. Would you like to give a little uh, report on what we thought about the uh, oh. LOC conference? Yes, I would. The conference was great. Uh, there was a lot of opportunity to see what was going on uh, throughout the state. 
for counselors and elected officials. Uh, we have an opportunity to um, participate in different seminars. Um, I'm not going to cite very many um, but it was it was really eye opening. I had a real insightful opportunity to tour the uh, fire station in G, which was really kind of cool to see the command center and see how things run in, in a bigger, larger area. And they actually don't operate on like you know, think of the bigger cities having many, many employees. They don't have as many employees as you think they do. They still operate on some of their uh, volunteer, like often leaving here. Uh, but it was it was really eye-opening to see a lot of people trying to get information and you know make good positive changes in their community and kind of communicating together. So overall it was a really good event to be able to attend. And I second that. I also thought that they spent a lot of time uh, talking about homelessness. I think uh, to kind of second on all of our presentations, homelessness, homelessness is a not only a national problem, it's a big state problem. And it was really interesting to hear what different cities around the state are doing, different size cities, and um, kind of, kind of uh, hearing just a different off the wall things that they're doing by taking different buildings and turning them into housing options, and, and so it was it was really interesting just to to hear from different people of all all the neat ideas. So I think we have the best um, plan so far, and, and not too many cities are following what we're doing. And we were able to share our ideas with the other cities. It is, it is a pretty big problem throughout. A city manager report. Uh, okay. we'll you know, Prince oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Board fund construction update. So Me again. Yeah. Is <laughs> <laughs> the over to me about it? So um, we kind of tried to put as much detail in your staff report as we could, so you've probably all seen it. Um, we have run into some delays, but you know, with the sad news, I'd like to point out the happy news, all of how far Fort Park has come. Um, you know, we're right now five grants that we're circulating between, I believe. And so as we filter through them all, all the little details of each one of those, um, we've got a lot of play equipment installed, the parking lot's prepped, we've got concrete poured, the restrooms, pavilions are up. Um, the list goes on. Um, we have run into a few hiccups, which every construction project does. Um, there, right now, because of the delay in our wetland permit, um, it kind of gave us a little bit of a setback, which the domino effect with the play equipment, the weather needing certain temperatures for the poor surface, we were right there at the deadline. And unfortunately, running into a couple other discrepancies, we ended up postponing that. So we're hoping to get back on track in the spring, and that way we will be complete anticipating July of 24. We'll all be able to move on in enjoy. I think. I think they're still doing it now. I saw they were putting like more places for foreign curves. And we'll be meeting with the contractor, kind of going over the details as we move forward of what the winner looks like, how we'll proceed. So, will they be doing any of the trail throughout the winter, or does that have to wait till the spring as well? It'll wait till the spring because it'll get too mucky, and then they'll either destroy additional wetlands or it'll cost more to. Uh, and Jim Houseman, there you are. My name is David. Good evening, Mayor, Council President, members of Council, staff. Uh, Jim Houseman, President of Fort Fund. With the Mayor Commission, I have a one page spreadsheet. With all the numbers. <laughs> if you want to uh, expedite it through here, 
everybody on the same level of knowledge. Without casting around Wayne, sorry, Wayne, Wayne, so the working grants 10 years means that uh, that's that. Do you have one more? Right there. Okay, this is a great, so much great positive capability. Quality of life, volunteers. I'm going to segue right, right, I'm going to segue right into that. So what you have uh, have before you is just a snapshot. So this is the, the seven capital improvement grants that the Friends of Fourth Bond have basically written these grants and within the those to the different grant committees with city staff. The top two, top two rows, you'll see phase one for the top two rows, phase two is what we're currently working. So we're in our 10th year in partnership. And what was originally slated to be a 20 year, if you got lucky, to complete all the phases of the park. What's going to be done in the, at the end of this? So we are, we're betting 500 good times to be in the pros, right? <laughs> so we're twice as fast as what the original master plan was speculated with what we get done. So, We've come a tremendous way, and I, what I want to try to bring it back to is, yes, we've accomplished a tremendous amount, and I think as we move forward here, the, the key word I want to get across, focus on, is appropriate maintenance, because at each one of these grants, these seven grants, there was a resolution to apply, to be, to be you know, a resolution to accept the grants, and then during the presentation, for each of these different grant committees, um, that question always came up. It was addressed by city staff. It was, it was either Christy or it was um, Brian. That's that question. The question was, what is the city's commitment to maintenance going forward with, with these facilities? And it was always an affirmative, we will provide the appropriate maintenance for grant. And I think that's, that's what we, as the Friends of Force Pond, are struggling with a little bit. Because as what happened in phase one, we had some vegetation die-offs um, in the bioswale. We had a tree and some shrubs, whether it was sprinkler lines or what, I'm not sure. But we had we had mortality for vegetation. And then as phase, um, phase one parking lot, we had a tree die, apparently it came from the sprinkler system being shut off as part of this phase two construction. We had we always have very warm warm, warm weather in the summer. I get it. Stuff happens. Okay. Stuff happens. Plants die, it gets hot. But the question is, when are they going to be replaced? That's what's not standing out there. They're dead. In the case of phase one, it's, that was done in 2020. It hasn't happened. So as you as you move into your city budget for the next next year, and you start looking at your council priorities, I would ask that you really focus on that. We have a as you can see there we have a three point two million dollar capital improvement project out there that really needs to be cared for. I mean that's that's the commitment. That's getting made and from our, our standpoint we just need to step it up and there's there's also instances of uh, the ongoing construction left a lot of dirt in the parking lot and the rain has basically pushed that dirt up to the curb so now when it rains the water going out to the drain actually backs up because there's so much dirt, the half inch mud along that drain. So when people even get out of their car, they have to cross through that mud and it lingers for long. So it's just, we need to have a greater presence on those sorts of things. We need to identify 
metrics for not only this facility, but why? What what's required out there? I'm not trying to. I don't, I'm not going to dictate staff requirements to you. That that's what these folks. I don't have that expertise. I'm just going to tell you that I don't think we're meeting the appropriate maintenance. That's the city. So however we get there, it would be great. It's really, really important that we do address that. Now we have the restroom in the line. I'm not sure if I've heard that, that the plan is to leave one or two of those stalls open. And is that, is that gonna happen this winter? Or if you can step back from it. <clears throat> okay. So I, I bring that up because that's another staff commitment. What, do we have resources to deal with that? Aaron, Aaron has voiced to me that he, he does, but it is it will be another resource. Of course. Step one of our ball, our key volunteers back here, and Michelle, you may remember Tony. Let me ask you to raise your hand. Tony Rosa back there, he was presented to him with the volunteer recognition last year. Him and a cadre of other volunteers are really what is keeping that parking lot in as good a condition as it is, but it can still be improved greatly. But so thank goodness that he's out there. He puts in a thousand hours a year. I see him all the time. And well, that's nice to be. <laughs> So, but they can't do it all. Our role has always been to do the light lifting. He makes a circuit around the pond. He does these those trash cans or on the perimeter path. He helps with the picnic tables and he meets and greets. He's an ambassador really for the city on answering questions for what's going on at the park. What, what can I do? What can I do? That kind of thing. But he doesn't have, he doesn't have the resource. He doesn't have the physical well being to do some of this heavy stuff. Not a, I'm not going to diss you, definitely. <laughs> He's just told me. He's getting tired. So we need to get those trees replaced. We need to get that landscape. We need to come up with a plan. We need to apply appropriate maintenance resources. Yes, sir. Yeah, what is the purpose of Friends Sports Park? Our mission since the city in the development and maintenance of Sports Farm property. Provide environmental education to the public. To assist the city. To assist the city. In our mission, that's our 10 year partnership. I think it's been a great partnership. So, see what we've been able to achieve to get that many the city to really be proud. I mean, it's to the degree that you can't apply for anymore until you close them out. And I know you have plans over here behind like Central Park. You've got, I, mean, I heard in the Parks Advisory Committee, you've got a master plan going. You really have big parking. You have the expanded activities and this and that. All that stems from uh, Oregon State Parks Grant Programs. <laughs> direct segue to how well you're taking care of the resource. That you don't want to apply more traffic for any inspection stuff. Don't necessarily announce. Okay. I want to be the dead horse. Thank you. Right. Tammy, I promise I have a moment. Okay. All right. Now I'm the city manager. <laughs> yes, uh, the only thing I have, uh, Madam Mayor, is I handed out to you. Oh, that's right. I handed out to you. Uh, something we've talked about for, well, just about a year, and that's our new agreement with the Chamber of creating a, uh, a transit lodging tax unified committee. And that's, I just wanted to give it to you. That's a, the uh, memorandum agreement we created with the Chamber, and Jessica, uh, uh, criminal in arms, is here and will answer any questions you have. But uh, as you know, Councilors Daigle and Council President Hamilton are part of that group. And uh, it looks like it's going to be a, I think it's gonna work. Do you have anything you wanted to say? No, I think it's going really well and we're really excited about the partnership with the city. 
And I think this is a really a lot better approach for us. It feels more comfortable for us and we can use our funds in a better way to really kind of promote the destination while also offering this other side um, to events and really anything that transient launching tax I just wanted you to have that and let you know on the record that uh, it's been executed. So that's all I have. Thank you. On the city council comments, remember monthly meeting time is limited. Please ask questions or make statements that are likely to benefit the group. Individual comments and questions that can be handled on a one-on-one -on -one basis should be handled outside the meeting. Councilor Daigle? Yeah, I'm charged to the homeless. You hear me? You hear me? Yes, talk right into the mic. Talk loud. And loud. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. In regards to the homeless situation, um, first of all, there's some people asking questions tonight, and I can say this through advance because this is something you need to address that. But we spend a lot of time on this, and I sit here and feel like I'm being sold on something. I don't know what I'm being sold on because we can talk about what's kind of happening, but we need to have no solution. So I think maybe since we created this thing, it's going to have to come together and, and create a committee or something to address it so we have something to talk about. I mean, listening to this report all the time, it's kind of raining actually. <laughs> and anyhow, I. I hope that when we answer these questions for people that they're made public so everybody knows what's going on. I think that the community needs to know what's happening with them to be public about it. That's all I know. Councilor Whitaker. I guess I guess as far as the homeless thing is concerned, I have to say that we're under an obligation to obey the federal law. From what I've heard and what I've seen, the amount of work that's been put in by the city, by Wayne, by the folks out there, that's what we're doing. Um, we used to have people sleeping on the street. We don't have that problem. Police are involved when they need to be, but we don't really have a crime going on. Um, and isn't it better to have a place for the homeless? go and to be taken care of and to be offered the services that they need that's off the beat path <clears throat> than it is to just allow them to go wherever they want, which is allowed by the law if they won't offer them a place of rest. So mm -hmm. I think that we're doing the best job that we can at this time with no funds being supplied by anybody except the city, whatever monies can be raised by people who are here. That will matter. Thank you. Councilor Smalley. It's a tough situation. I, mean, I go back and forth. And originally, I was against it. I'm like, it's a bad idea. We're going to invite more homeless people in. And now I have I've changed my mind. I think without it, I think it'd be worse off. Gives the people a place to go. And when you actually see them show up and put a face with the name and stuff, it changes for me. So I support it. I need to get behind it a little more. So, that's all I got. Councilor Grossman. I don't know. Councilor Hello. President Hamilton. I agree with Councilor Whitaker. Um, it is a tough situation. But we're required to do it. And for them to have a place to go to, I mean, they're not on our street bench, on the benches on the street. Um, it's a tough situation. But I think if we all come together and try to help the situation instead of just the complaining, um, I think that's important. And although probably not going to be important or popular, my question is, what would Jesus do? And my compassion takes over, and I I, I feel for them. 
probably there's lots of people in this room right now that are a paycheck away from being homeless, especially with the way inflation is right now. So I just hope we can all come together and make this work even better. And I, I think Wayne and everybody that helps with it, um, and I think the ones that are homeless could be here tonight, because I know that's gotta be hard on you. So thank you. I also want to, I didn't go anywhere Saturday, but I'm assuming the Lions put flags up. Yeah. So I want to thank the Lions for putting our flags up for veterans. And thank you, veterans. You're welcome. Councilor yes, Wood. Um, I also want to thank all of us for to protect our country. Um, we've had a lot of heartfelt discussions here tonight. Um, it's, it's really deep for many people, those who are experiencing houselessness, those who are experiencing homelessness. Um, and it's not something we can do by ourselves. So it is going to take community to resolve the problem. And um, we do need to have meaningful and productive conversations about how we can make it better. And I think that when we first started this with uh, the Steve's Village, I was like, oh, this is not a good idea. But after seeing the residents come here, share what they're, what they're doing there, I think that there's, there's probably some great people there that are trying to get into a better situation. And then there's probably some there that are not trying to make a better situation as well, just like in communities all over. Um, but, you know, our business community, it's important for them to be able to open their doors. So having a place for them to go because we're mandated by the 19th report, it's, it's important that there is a place that's designated so that they're not sleeping in our business doorways where businesses can be owned and operated. Um, so having that committee like for what a person suggested and comes to the table, that might be a, a good opportunity to come together and maybe come up with some solutions that might benefit what we're doing here to make what's going on better. That's all I have. Thank you. And I, I thought everybody had some great input. Uh, I, I always have thought that Having Hastings Village has been a great, um, great thing for our in-house people. Uh, I think it's just been the right thing to do for our, for human beings in our town, for us to take care of, of our people, for them to have a place to go. Um, I, I just never thought it was a great thing to do the hurting environment, or hurting uh, thought and just moving people around um, every day for them not to have a, a, a place for them to stay to feel safe um, and and for us to be able to offer services for for people uh, which is not they're not capable of getting that when they're being pushed around from from site to site every morning that's not an environment for people to get help if they if they need it for us to be able to to give a hand up for our citizens that that want it I think is is just a human thing to do. Um, and so I think it's great for us to do that. I really like the idea uh, that the gentleman had earlier about uh, people in our community that have uh, trades that might want to help and <clears throat> come together to help the community uh, and maybe come together and, and uh, work through uh, and offer assistance to our homeless community might be a great, great thing to try. So I'd be all for that as well. And the last thing I wanted to just mention is I have my coffee with the mayor every month and I am not going to be having my December one just because of the holidays. So I'll be starting back up again. It's me. So on to public comment. Uh, for the purpose of public comment is to allow citizens to present information regarding items 
off the agenda, a time limit of three minutes per citizen shall apply. And I have two of those. We'll start with Karen Meyer. Um, this is a concern that I, I saw actually on Facebook. Um, a, a neighbor took and on two different occasions a video of busloads of men being dropped off at a residence. And from there, vans come and pick up some of them and go to two other different residents, I understand. And then in the particular residence she took the movie, the video of, there are between 12 to 20 men um, living in that residence, 1,300 square feet, three bedrooms, one bathroom. And um, the building code 27, I didn't bring my glasses, so bear with me. Building code 27150, the home occupation site shall not be used as a headquarters for the assembly of the employees for instruction or other purposes, including dispatch to other locations. And my understanding is that these men leave at five o'clock in the morning, hard hats, logging boots, and away they go. I heard sometimes they were blueberry farms. And the reason it concerns me, first of all, I was happening next door to me, I'd be livid. But it also concerns me because my daughter and um, granddaughter went to a presentation by the FBI that said that there's a lot of slave, slavery going on right now from the cartels and they're bringing these immigrants in and they have to work off their passage with the cartel. And so we might or we might not actually have slave labor in the city. And I, you can look into it or not look into it. I'd be concerned about it if I were you. But the other thing is listening to, to everything. Um, I think these gentlemen had the best idea, and it was an idea that we kind of started with, but then um, it is to deal with our Sutherland homeless people. And I think we have to have two separate, two separate, um, ideas going here. We have to have one thing for the Sutherland people, and we have to have one thing for people coming in out of the area where they are hurt, because we don't want them to stay. We, we have enough to do keeping track of our Sutherland people. And I don't think that a lot of people understand that, 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 we, that the Ninth Circuit doesn't say um, that we have to take everybody forever. It, it says that we have to provide them a place between dawn and dusk. So there are options that we can do. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, Bruce, Bruce 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 Thank you. Bruce Pettengill, 301 Hawthorne Street. Uh, two quick things. I'm going to talk about tactics very quickly, but as far as Hastings Village is concerned, I am willing to help anybody who wants to be helped. Councilor Wood, you touched on it, but you didn't specify it. And the problem is <clears throat> not the people who are here, they care. It's the people who don't care. It's the people who are putting hypodermic needles along Hawthorne Street, Eddy Street, Johnson Street. Those are the people that, are, that people are complaining about, not these people. So that's all I'm going to say about Hastings. Anyway, uh, last month I was here and we talked about uh, paying an urban renewal bill with money from the water district. And that passed. And then <clears throat> I'm going to apologize again because my wife passed away in April. So I take a whole new look at all the stuff that comes in. And my property taxes came in. And I took a look at it. My 301 Hawthorne. It's not, it's not very much, but it's my home. And it is pretty nice for my standards. 
Yeah, I appreciate it. My wife loved it. Anyway, I get my tax bill, $2,100 for 301 Hawthorne Street. Tax value, $165,000. You want to know what the percentage was that the city of Sutherland takes? $1,767 of that $2,100 tax bill goes to you people. And then you use money from pot A to pay pot B. Urban renewal is in that tax. The water district fees that we're paying for that, for that new water plant are in those taxes. The school district gets $600 of that. So the $1,100 is going up here for you guys to spend on urban renewal and other things. So, you know, I'm all good for government and providing for the people and all that. But you guys need to be responsible for our money. And I was not impressed with taking from the water district to pay urban renewal when you're already getting tax money for urban renewal. Thank you. I would love to have a town hall and have the time to really dig into some of these things uh, in detail. We'll answer all those questions. Okay. Just carry it forward. So we will get some answers back from the questions that were presented tonight at the next uh, the next city council. I wrote I wrote them down. At this time, the council will take a five minute break before entering into executive session. Calls under ORS one ninety two point six six zero two I performance evaluations right. of public officers and employees. Review and evaluate the job performance of a chief executive officer, other officers, employees, and staff. Person whose performance is being reviewed and evaluated does not reflect the open hearing. Representative of the new media and does the name staff shall be allowed to attend executive session. All other members of the audience are asked to leave the room. So we will adjourn, uh, we will reconvene after this to um, reconvene our council meeting. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah. Thing of business. Um, one item of business. No, I can see the word. <laughs> Here. Good. Um, do I have a motion to uh, accept? Uh, City manager uh, resignation for January 1st, 2024, and accept uh, the agreement. Am I resigning? Oh, it's not it's like just a new contract. Oh, a new contract. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm trying to, I'm winging this, okay? Mm -hmm. To accept the new contract starting January 1st, 2024, as presented. Employment agreement. How's that? I make a motion that we do. Like, any, dis any discussion? Oh, that's all. It's already started. You can it's already you're too late. You're too late. Any discussion? That's a contract for one year till the end. Two years. Two years. Okay, <laughs> till December of 2025. Yes. December 31st. Okay, two years. I would. Okay. Any other discussion? Let's vote. Uh, Councillor Daigle? Well, I guess okay. <laughs> well, that's a new one. Councillor Whitaker? Aye. Councillor Smalley? Aye. Councillor Grossman? <laughs> that'd, that'd be you. Aye. <laughs> Councillor Hamilton? Aye. 
<laughs> Councillor Woods. Aye. Mayor Sumner. Okay. <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you all. I, I hesitated to even look at I was reading an email from uh, Gary Fadden, who thought he hurt my feelings when he said that from the way. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, Chad. He said I was just kidding. <laughs>